Hey everybody, and welcome to another bonus episode of Horror Movie Night. On the phone is Craig and Sandy, the people behind Creature Feature Weekend, which is coming to Gettysburg on Labor Day weekend. Uh, Craig and Sandy, so nice to have you. Oh, thank um, you so much. Yeah, thank you. We, we really appreciate you having us on. So I am very excited for your guys' show. I feel like out of overnight, Gettysburg has somehow turned into the horror convention capital of Pennsylvania uh, for 2019, and I'm all for it. So uh, what what are some of the cool things that you guys have up your sleeve for listeners who maybe aren't familiar with Creature Feature Weekend just yet? Well, I mean, as for like every other convention we have, you know, celebrity guests and vendors, but we wanted to bring more in the way of activities, things for people to do, you know, when they're not in line for autographs, when they're not buying things. So, I mean, we got everything from an independent film festival where all the movies are actually going to show on the big screen at the movie theater across the parking lot. Okay. We have, yeah, we, I mean, we have a room that's going to be nothing but oddities. Oh, wow. Wow. You know, shrunk, shrunken heads and, you know, oh, monkey we, fish. and <laughs> Oh, we got all kinds of things yeah. in there. There's like a PG mermaid. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's really cool to see. But, and the, the nice thing is, I mean, we also have like a virtual reality company coming out that's doing uh, horror films. So you get, you know, the interactive portion where you can be in the chair, part of your own horror movie, or you can just be a spectator listening to the screams in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's really, really cool. I didn't even know. I've, I've been talking to you guys for months. I didn't even know about this stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. We've been growing and expanding daily. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we're always adding things on to this. I mean, we have arcade machines that are going to be there. A couple of them have actually been in movies and TV shows. We got the actual Dragon's Lair machine that was on Stranger Things Season 2. Nice. We got the actual Pong machine that was in X-Men Days of Future Past. And the cool thing is, is that um, it's actually a company that's local. It's Timeline Arcade. They're actually bringing them all out. They have a place in Hanover, a place in York, and I think they just opened up one in Lancaster. But, you know, they're doing it just to help out because they're all they're happy about having a show in, Lanc- in uh, Gettysburg again. Yeah, yeah so com- coming out to play the games, I mean, that's what we were looking for, like having all these things up within the ticket price. You know, so that way we understand it's going to be Labor Day weekend. We're a family running this. So we want to invite families to come out and have trick-or-treating for the kids and have games the kids can play. And we even have a one-man band coming out, and he actually has a bunch of instruments so the kids can play along with him. And, you know, and therefore, you know, if they want to spend some time with us and then in the afternoon go check out the battlefield or, you know, any of the many things to do in Gettysburg, and that's definitely an option, you know, but at least coming in and paying the ticket price gets them so much more than just in and out, you know, get your celebrity signature and leave. Um, so yeah, no, it's going to be really cool. Well, I'm putting in a request that you get at least one or two pinball machines in there. Cause that's my addiction as far as arcades go. <laughs> no, as far as I know, we are actually going to have a couple of pinball Sweet. machines. And the cool thing is that, like, everything we're going to have, you can play. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> and you can actually stand there and play the Dragon Blair game. You know, they're all things you can take part in. You can actually go up there and play. Are you going to run any, and, and, you know, feel free to tell me to cut this <laughs> if, if you're like, no, nah, don't talk about that. But are you going to try to run maybe a, a specific gaming tournament through one of those arcade cabinets? Oh, um, as far as I, we haven't really discussed doing anything like that. It's just going to be stuff that people can go up and play as they as they want to. All right. I mean, it's a good idea. We, I mean, there's a lot of things we've thought about. We thought about having a group come out that does board games. You know, we've thought about a lot of different things with this. It's just that. As far as it stands right now, we just have a good... I think they said they're going to come out with like five to ten arcade machines that people can play. I, I mean, that's still amazing. Where did the idea for you guys to, to do your own convention stem from? Because I, I feel like 
if I'm being honest, it's a thing that a lot of people think about doing, but not a lot of people actually put it into practice. You know what I mean? Um, well, for me, it was honestly, I just, I just wanted to have a show where there's more things for people to do. Like I, I go to a lot of the shows in the area. I mean, within like a multi-state region, I've gone to like, I think I've gone to like, maybe 20 something 30 shows in the last couple of years and it's you know it's always a lack of activities you know it's something i feel is missing with a lot of the shows you know and it's one of those things like a lot of times i go there i have a great time and then i leave you know it's just like i meet a couple people maybe buy a couple things and then i'm out the door you know i just i just wish there was more for people to do so when this all hit me i said why don't i start my own and my wife has stood by me throughout this whole thing Uh well and and i i agree with you because if i wasn't vending at most of the shows that i go to i don't know how long i would stay at that particular show like you said you kind of you walk around and you see the celebrities you hit the vendor table and then two hours later you're like all right i've seen it all and then you go out like no, yeah, to, to have more of a souvenir in the way of memories than just, you know, with the autograph you're walking away with. So, yeah, that, that was our, our aim. Yeah, I, like. I mean, you know, how many how many shows, I mean, I know there's been a couple in recent years, but I mean, how many know of that you can go there and see a concert at night, you know? Yeah, no, and I, I mean, was, it's funny because I'm not a gamer in the slightest. Like, that's not really my my thing. And probably one of the only conventions that I genuinely have a good time at is the Too Many Games convention, just because they have live music there and they have, you know, the the free play arcade and they have all this stuff beyond just like meeting some voice actors and looking at vendors tables. And it's crazy to me how much the horror conventions have missed that and haven't focused on like, let's have live music, let's have an arcade, like let's give people a reason to come here as soon as it opens and stay until the doors close. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we're, we're big into nostalgia too. So the idea of going to like an entertainment center where it's just like, you just go in and you play and you have fun and you just lose track of time. And that's really our goal just to have like the smiles on everybody's faces and everybody walks away having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, I mean, I wanted to have a concert, you know, just because I'm really big into music and, I was like, well, it's a horror convention, so I got to find something applicable. So we got Tim Capella, the saxophonist from the Lost Boys. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, like, how do you go wrong with that? Well, and I know that there's something else from the Lost Boys that's supposed to be at this show as well. Yeah, we do have a big announcement. Uh, Actually, I think you're posting it tonight. So uh, tonight we are announcing the Frog Brothers reunion. We actually got uh, Jameson Newlander to join Corey Feldman for the first reunion they've had in years. That's awesome. (laughs) Oh, I I couldn't even explain how excited I was when I finally found out that this was actually going to happen. I I think his voice went about two octaves when I got the phone call. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, you called me when it was just a maybe and you were like a kid in a candy store. So the fact that it's actually happening is even better. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, who else beyond the Frog Brothers? Who else do we have that's uh, officially announced guests for Creature Feature? Joe Bob Briggs, you know, Perfect. Joe Bob. I mean, it's one of those things. This is my first year, so I wanted to pull together people that I was personally excited about. You know, people I thought people would be interested in meeting. And Joe Bob Briggs was someone I grew up watching on the movie channel. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was it was just one of those shows that it wasn't my introduction to horror movies because I got started with Elvira's show, but Joe Bob was when I really it really sort of clicked for me and it became like my big thing like just watching all those movies so i mean it's like a huge part of my past that i was really happy i was able to get through this show yeah i was always bummed because i discovered monster vision probably like the month before tnt pulled it off of television (laughs) 
So I had like this solid month where I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And then it just wasn't on there the next Friday. And I was so disappointed. I can only imagine. I mean, Joe Bob's a legend in this. Yeah, oh, yeah I, he's a huge personality. I'm so glad he's made a, a comeback on Shutter, and everybody is falling back in love with him, and you know, and the whole whole fresh face like going on with this. Whole new generation getting mm-hmm. introduced to Joe Bob. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I know, like when you handed me the first flyer way back in March, his name was on there, and I was like, "All right, you got my attention. You got Joe Bob. Let's hear what else the show's gonna have." Because, I mean, oh yeah. He is the That's icon. Right. You know what I mean? And speaking of icons, we actually got uh, Tom Woodruff Jr. as well, which to hear the name, you know, it may not ring a bell, but the face, you know, he was all of these creatures, like back in your, your favorite movies, you know. He was the original pumpkin head. Oh, he was. Well, yeah, I mean, he, <laughs> he was the original pumpkin head. He, he played an alien. In every movie from Alien 3 to Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Oh, shit. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, one of my favorites was always the uh, the grid alien from Alien vs. Predator. Oh, yeah, that lime green. Yeah, the one, pattern. when we got yeah. hit with the netting. Like, that was always my favorite. You know, I could actually get a picture of it signed. You know, I mean, the Gill Man from Monster Squad. He was the Graboids and Tremors. I mean... The guy is an absolute legend when it comes to creature. When it comes to being a creature actor. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fantastic! The production that he was part of, you know, he helped with the effects in Terminator. I mean, and yeah. one of the first movies he actually worked on as an effects artist was the original Terminator. Yeah. I mean, he worked on Aliens. I, I mean, the amount of movies he worked on. The guy actually has an Academy Award for his work on Death Becomes Her. Mm-hmm. You Holy know, shit! That was my favorite scene when you see like the the, shot, the shotgun blast in her stomach and um, Goldie Hawn's like peeking through. Or no, the chunk, I'm sorry, it was uh, Meryl Streep's like peeking through the hole. That was just amazing. Like, oh, like I don't know how they did that. <laughs> that oh, movie yeah. scared the shit out of me as a kid. <laughs> my parents <laughs> rented it and it scarred me for for a couple of years. <laughs> Um, I, I actually really enjoyed that one when I was growing I haven't seen it in years, though. It it's holds up bad. really, really well. We did, probably in our first year of podcasting, we did an episode on Death Becomes Her, and we were all blown away by how well it holds up still. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's got oh. Bruce Willis in it, Goldie Hawn, Meryl Streep, Isabella Rossellini. I mean, it's, yeah, it's clear. I love it. I, I, my favorite. So I, I didn't even realize I was considered horror, but I mean... If you look at it, it is kind of some way. It's a very yeah. gory, madcap comedy is the way I describe it. It's <laughs> it's like Clue, but if Clue had people with giant holes in their chests and their heads twist backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Zombies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, and Meryl Streep's in it. And actually, more recently, he actually was, it was him and one other guy that, act, that created the look of Pennywise in the latest hits. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Very, that's but, awesome. And that's the thing is, like, he never does shows. He's one, like, Pumpkinhead was one of my favorites growing up, and it's someone I have never met. I have never, in the past, I think it's like, I think it's the past, like, six, seven years I've been going to conventions pretty heavily. I haven't seen his name mentioned once in this, on the East Coast. I was like, I got to get him out here. Mm-hmm. A treat for everybody. <laughs> oh yeah, that was one of the ones that like I actually fought the hardest to get. Like that was a big one. All right, now here's here's one question because I know that this show also leans a little into some of the obscure films of our childhood. What is what is a, a get that you're real excited about, even though you know it's kind of a little bit more fringy? Um, probably Greta Greta from Demons. Oh wow. I didn't even know she was going to yeah. be there. That's awesome. Yeah, it's one of those things, like, with her, I mean, she's the face. I mean, she was the main demon throughout the entire movie. You know, I absolutely love Lumberto Baba's demons. Like, it was just one of those movies I was like, as soon as I saw that I was I was talking to an agent, he and she was one of his clients, I was like, I got to get her. I was like, she's got to be there. <laughs> you know? I was just automatically, I was like, I have to do this. 
Well, I think uh, that's pretty exciting because that is you're right. That is one where it's like, you know, main. You're not going to get a non like a like a person who's only into mainstream horror coming in for her. But the people who are like horror hounds are going to be tearing down the door to get to meet her. Oh yeah, and that's the thing is like a lot of people like I had a good number of people send me messages asking me if I'm getting more from the Italian genre and stuff like that. You know, and I'm just like. It's tough when it comes to the Italian films because, man, like just just the language barrier. We're trying to discuss all the options and trying to figure it out. Yeah, we really translate with our friends. <laughs> well, and I and I, no, I, I, I feel like to a certain extent, a lot of the I'm trying to think how to word this. I feel like a lot of the Italian actors, especially from that era of the seventies and eighties they're not like passionate about horror. Like it's always like, it was just kind of a job for them. And Mm -hmm. I don't think Italy embraces like the horror fandom the way the States do. So I feel like it's very like a weird thing to them to like sit around with a bunch of people who are obsessed with this genre. So I can see that also being a little bit of a disconnect, trying to get to the Italian horror crowd. It is, but it's also one of those things because when you're dealing with the Italian films like none of them were filmed like with with sound like you know they would make like our dario argento would make movies with people from all different countries and i do not know how they acted together because one doesn't understand the other one but they're trying to react to what they say and and everything is dubbed over at the end yeah, so, to, match, to match whatever language you're dis- distributing it to, but yeah. you know, you'll watch their list news and you can tell one's speaking Italian, the other one's speaking French, the other one's speaking English. <laughs> it's just it's <laughs> like, you know, it's, uh, like it almost be like a reunion of sorts, like a family reunion where it's just like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, come and see you guys in forever. That's a, a memory, <laughs> you know. But as you were, I'm sure, well aware, when they bring the movies over, usually they're highly edited. Oh yeah, so, like, absolutely. So nowadays, with people wanting to see the full versions, most of the time, they have to watch them in the Italian language or something that jumps back and forth from English to Italian or with subtitles or some other way, like, in order to see the full movie. So when it comes to that, you're, in a lot of ways, you're losing a good chunk of your audience. Plus, the uh, any kind of, like, expanded disc or anything be watchable. You know, you can't re-release it or anything because of that. So it's just one of those things that I find, like, when you're dealing with stuff like that, you already have a smaller audience. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Because, like, I got heavy into it a few years back, or a couple decades ago, but it's one of those things where the people that I know that are really into horror that even know about these movies, it's few and far between. Yeah. Okay. So let's say that someone's listening and now they're going, you got me convinced. I want to go to creature feature weekend. Where are they going to go in order to attend? In order to what? Like in order to attend the show, they want to buy their ticket right now. What's the best spot for them to get a ticket and get up to date on all of the new announcements over the next couple months? Uh, the best place to go is Facebook for all the information um, as far as upcoming announcements. Uh, the best place for overall information is our website. It's www.featureweekend.com. Um, to buy tickets, it's all through brown paper tickets. All right. You know, but the link is on our website. Uh, if they want to book a hotel, the link is on our website. It's at the Wyndham. It's actually, I would say it's either the best or one of the best rates for the Gettysburg area for that weekend. It is significantly less than most places. Okay. Yeah, it would be so, so close in proximity to the event itself. It's totally worth it, but I think it's 99 it's a 99 night. It's 99 a night. Yep, to so stay at the hotel close to everybody, and you would be sharing the same hotel as the celebrities, so, you know, you, you don't know who you're going to see down at breakfast the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, but the only thing is that, I mean, anybody who wants to book a room has to do it by August 7th. All right. Uh, after, yeah. that, after that, the room rate goes away. All right, well, you guys heard yeah. it. Go yeah. check out the website. 
book a hotel room, get a ticket. You're not going to want to miss this weekend. It's on Labor Day weekend. So end of August, beginning of September, be there. I'll certainly be there. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Jersey Ghouls and them will be in attendance as well. It's going to be a great, great weekend. You're not going to want to miss out. So, well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much for having us on. Not a problem. Let's try to get you on closer to the actual show as well so we can really let them know what, what's in store with screenings and all that other good jazz. Oh, yeah. I oh, know. That'd be great. Yeah, let's be able to chat again. Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 